In the cold silence between stars, some things move without purpose. Others move with terrifying precision. When astronomers first spotted 3 eye Atlas speeding toward our solar system, they thought it was just another rock, a cosmic relic thrown out from the heart of another galaxy. But then it got closer and stranger and louder, not in a way we can hear, but in the kind of frequency that only the most advanced instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope could begin to interpret. And what they detected was not noise. It was not static. It was a signal, structured, targeted, and chilling. The type of signal that shouldn't exist. One that suggests intelligence, engineering, and intent. A signal that points back to a region of space long associated with unexplained radio bursts. And now James Webb has done something no other telescope could. It locked onto that signal, interpreted part of it, and what it found has shaken the scientific world to its core. Because this might not be just an interstellar object. It might be a message in motion, a probe hiding in plain sight. And its trajectory suggests it's not here by accident. From the very beginning, 3 I Atlas defied expectations. Moving at over 61 km cs, it's the fastest interstellar object ever recorded in our neighborhood. And yet its motion was eerily precise, unlike the random entries of typical comets or asteroids. It's coming from the Sagittarius constellation, a region already known for strange radio signals, including the infamous WOW signal detected in 1977. Coincidence? Maybe. But the deeper astronomers looked, the stranger things got. As 3i Atlas approached the inner solar system, its spectral signature didn't align with any known natural object. Using the Very Large Telescope in Chile, scientists detected nickel gas, but without the iron that always accompanies it. In cosmic terms, that's like finding smoke without fire. Both elements are formed together in supernovae, and they appear together in virtually every comet we've ever studied, but not this one. And even more alarming, cyanide levels began spiking as the object neared the sun. The pattern didn't fit the expected sublimation behavior of cometary ices. Instead of a gradual release, it was a sharp, sudden spike as if something internal had been triggered. Add to that a massive release of carbon dioxide, far more than expected, and suddenly we're no longer looking at a frozen rock. We're looking at something that's activating. When NASA assigned James Webb to monitor 3 I Atlas, it wasn't just about tracking its path. Webb's infrared instruments could capture heat, gas and chemical changes at a level of detail unmatched by any other observatory. What Webb detected was not just a heat signature. It was a pulse, a rhythmic modulation in the gas emissions, particularly in the cyanide cloud, that followed a repeating pattern, not biological, not geological, digital. According to internal sources, the Webb team noticed that the pulse was composed of evenly spaced spikes with frequency harmonics that mirrored binary encoding, the foundation of every computer language we know. That pulse wasn't random. It was information, data, a possible transmission. And then came the most chilling discovery of all. The signal bore mathematical structures based on prime numbers and Fibonacci sequences, unmistakable hallmarks of intelligent design. Scientists couldn't deny it. The object wasn't just behaving oddly, it was talking. But who was it talking to? And more importantly, what was it saying? If 3i Atlas were just drifting through space, its path would be chaotic. But this object is not only controlled, it's moving in near-perfect alignment with the ecliptic plane, the invisible flat surface along which all the planets orbit the Sun. That kind of precision is almost unheard of in interstellar objects. And yet here it is slicing through our solar system, not at some random angle, but following a path that allows multiple planetary flybys, including a very close approach to Mars on October 3rd, 2025. This route isn't efficient. It's not the quickest way through. It's deliberate, almost as if designed to observe or scan. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter will attempt to image it with high-rise, and other spacecraft like Psyche and ESA's Juice Probe might also get a glimpse, but the alignment is too perfect, too convenient. Some have pointed out how similar this is to Voyager's gravity assist trajectory, which was engineered to visit several planets. Could 3i Atlas be doing the same but in reverse? Its timing, its angle, even its avoidance of Earth at all costs. This isn't a passive object. This is a probe on a covert tour. And its creators, if they exist, knew exactly what they were doing. 
One of the more disturbing observations came not from what Three-Eye Atlas reflected, but from what it emitted. Scientists expected the light coming from it to be entirely reflected sunlight, but the brightness levels didn't add up. In fact, if it were only reflecting sunlight, the object would need to be larger than Manhattan Island. But if it were producing its own light, that would change everything. Some experts now suggest that the object may be nuclear-powered, using energy to drive internal systems, perhaps even propulsion. And if that's true, it would explain the strange heating signatures, the selective gas release, and even the signal detected by Webb. Avi Loeb, the controversial Harvard astronomer, points out that many modern spacecraft are built from nickel-based materials with special coatings and adhesives that could release the very gases we're seeing under intense heat. In other words, 3i Atlas might be a disguised machine built to appear like a comet while hiding advanced technology underneath. A ghost ship from the stars, one that emits light when it shouldn't, flies with impossible control, and now for the first time in human history, is communicating in a language only our most advanced telescope could hear. While scientists were focused on James Webb's detection of the signal, a parallel phenomenon began unfolding across Earth. Unrelated machines began to react. Deep in the Nevada desert, one of the early SETI radio telescopes, long decommissioned, began registering data anomalies and turned on without manual input. In Australia, a private satellite dish used for climate modeling received packets of raw binary bursts in the same harmonic intervals as the web detected signal. In Chile, a university-run spectrograph froze mid-analysis and crashed with a log file simply titled Loop Triggered. These weren't isolated cases. Across observatories and research facilities, random instruments began to malfunction, not due to overload or environmental factors, but as if they were reacting to something familiar. Engineers called it impossible. AI researchers called it recognition. Something in the three-eye atlas signal was interacting not with our ears, not even with our eyes, but with the systems we built to observe, as if it was never meant for us directly, as if it had been crafted for the tools we created, a message for our machines, bypassing human interpretation entirely. The comparison was inevitable. When Umwamua passed through our solar system in 2017, it too was initially mistaken for a typical space rock, but it soon defied expectations. It lacked a conventional coma, accelerated without explanation, and reflected sunlight in ways no natural body should. Avi Loeb proposed it was artificial. The world laughed, then forgot. But now with Three-Eye Atlas, scientists are taking that theory far more seriously. The spectral anomalies, the unnatural trajectory, the signal, all match or exceed the strangeness of Oumuamua. The two objects entered our system from similar regions of the sky. Both followed unique paths that allowed flybys of inner planets. And most disturbingly, some now believe they may be part of a series, not isolated events, but members of a fleet or relays in a long-range, time-delayed network of watchers, a cosmic breadcrumb trail. And each object, including Three-Eye Atlas, seems to get closer, more active, more aligned with our technology. It's as if they're watching our evolution or guiding it. In science fiction, few theories are as haunting as the dark forest hypothesis. The idea that the universe is like a dark forest filled with civilizations who stay quiet because to reveal yourself is to risk destruction. In this context, Three-Eye Atlas may not be a probe in search of conversation, but one sent to observe who's making noise. Humanity has become loud. We've been broadcasting for a century. We've sent out radio waves, laser signals, even physical spacecraft with golden records and engraved coordinates. Maybe Three-Eye Atlas is not a coincidence. Maybe it was summoned. Or worse, maybe it's here to determine whether we should continue to speak. The signal web detected may not be a greeting. It might be a scan, a query, an algorithm seeking specific parameters, technological thresholds, environmental stability, or behavioral patterns that decide if a species is safe or dangerous. And if that's the case, the most important question is not what does the signal say, but what does it mean for us to have heard it at all? Back at the core of this enigma lies a chilling possibility. What if Three-Eye Atlas didn't come to deliver a message, but to run a test? Scientists reviewing the modulated gas emissions and light signatures began noticing a strange pattern. The intensity of cyanide release and the amplitude of the infrared pulse 
appeared to change depending on where it was being observed from. In other words, the object was reacting differently when Earth-based telescopes, Mars satellites, and Webb all pointed at it. It was adjusting, responding. One physicist described it as a mirror designed to reflect our own level of understanding, 